In January 1945, 511 American and Allied POWs were held inside the barbed wire of the Pangatian prison camp near Cabanatuan on the Philippine island of Luzon. They were the survivors of the fall of the Philippines in 1942, including soldiers, marines, sailors, pilots, as well as civilians. After a lapse of more than two years, U.S. forces returned to the Philippines, landing at Leyte on the 20th of October 1944, followed by landings on Luzon on the 9th of January 1945. Philippine scouts reported that POWs were in Cabanatuan camp and that the Japanese intended to move them or even murder them as the American army approached. In addition to these Japanese intentions, malnutrition and disease took a daily toll of POWs whose ability to survive had ran out. Sixth U.S. Army Commander, Lieutenant General Walter Kruger, assigned the 6th Ranger Battalion to prepare the raid. The 6th Rangers, the only Army Rangers in the Pacific, were commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Henry A. Musi, a 1936 West Point graduate. Their mission was to infiltrate about 30 miles behind enemy lines, assault the Cabanatuan camp, then liberate the prisoners and return them safely to U.S. lines before the Japanese could mount a counterattack. The road in front of the prison camp is heavily traveled by tanks and vehicles withdrawing towards the mountains or establishing defensive positions. There are 5,000 Japs in and around the town of Kobanatuan and a strong enemy force camped along the Cabo River just less than a mile away from the camp. At any given time, there may be a hundred up to 300 Japs inside a compound. For the raid, Colonel Musi chose Company C of the 6th Rangers, commanded by Captain Robert Prince, and it is reinforced by the 2nd Platoon of Company F, led by 1st Lieutenant John F. Murphy. Four combat photographers from the 832nd Signal Service Battalion and two teams of the 6th Army's elite recon unit, the Alamo Scouts, were included. In total, the Ranger Force consisted of 8 officers and 120 enlisted men. Invaluable support for the Rangers came from several hundred Filipino guerrillas under Captain Eduardo Son and Captain Juan Pahuta. They provided intelligence route security, and interface with the civilian population. The guerrillas would also play a critical combat role during the assault on the camp. The group developed a plan to rescue the prisoners. 14 scouts made up of two teams would leave 24 hours ahead of the main force to survey the camp. The main force would consist of 90 rangers from C Company and 30 from F Company who would march 30 miles behind Japanese lines. They would surround the camp, kill the guards, and rescue and escort the prisoners back to American lines. The Americans would join up with 80 Filipino guerrillas who would serve as guides and help in the rescue attempt. On the evening of January 27th, the rangers studied air reconnaissance photos and listened to guerrilla intelligence on the prison camp. The two teams of Alamo scouts led by 1st Lieutenant William Nellist and Thomas Ronasville left Gimba at 19 and together infiltrated behind enemy lines for the long trek to attempt a rescue of the prison camp. The rangers moved out at 0500 
on January 28. They halted at Gimba and left with native guides at 1400 to march to a guerrilla camp near Lobong, about 5 miles to the southeast from where they would link up with the Osan's guerrillas. By nightfall, the combined forces was behind Japanese lines. At the village of Balinkarin, the rangers were joined by Pahota's forces and obtained the latest intelligence from the Alamo scouts. The scouts revealed that the terrain around the camp was flat, which would leave the forces exposed before the raid could even start. Upon learning that Musi wanted to push through with the attack that evening, Pahota resisted, insisting that it would be suicide. He revealed that the guerrillas had been watching an estimated 1,000 Japanese soldiers camped out across the Kabu River. Just a few hundred yards from the prison, Pahota also confirmed reports that as many as 7,000 enemy troops were deployed around Kabanatuan city, just located several miles away. After consolidating information from Pahota and the Alamo scouts, Musi agreed to postpone the raid for 24 hours. At 11.30 on the 30th of January, the Alamo scouts disguised as locals managed to gain access to an abandoned shack 300 yards from the camp. Avoiding detection by the Japanese guards, they observed the camp from the shack and prepared a detailed report on the camp's major features. The plan of attack was that the rangers would be split into two groups, about 90 rangers of C Company, led by Prince, would attack the main camp and escort the prisoners out, while 30 rangers of a platoon from F Company, commanded by Lieutenant John Murphy, would signal the start of the attack by firing into various Japanese positions at the rear of the camp. 1930. Once Prince had ensured that all of the POWs were safely out of the camp, he would fire a red flare, indicating that all troops should fall back to a meetup at Pampanga River, 1.5 miles north of the camp, where 150 guerrillas would be ready with carabao pulled carts to transport the POWs. Captain Pahota suggested that to distract the guards, a United States Army Air Force airplane should buzz the camp to divert the guards' eyes to the sky. Musi agreed with the idea, and a radio request was sent to command to ask for a plane to fly over the camp, while the men made their way across the field. Two groups of guerrillas of the Luzon Guerrilla Armed Forces, one under Pahota and another under Captain Eduardo Hosson, would be sent in opposite directions to hold the main road near the camp. Pahota and 200 guerrillas were to set up a roadblock next to the wooden bridge over the Cabo River. This setup, northeast of the prisoner camp, would be the first line of defense against the Japanese forces camped across the river. This would be within earshot of the assault on the camp. Captain Hosson and his 75 guerrillas, along with the Ranger Bazooka team, would set up a roadblock approximately 800 yards southwest of the prison camp to stop any Japanese forces that would arrive from Kabanatuan. Skillful reconnaissance and careful planning paid off in a swift and well-executed attack. The rangers and the guerrillas moved into position at twilight on the 30th of January, 1944. They crossed the Pampanga River and then at 1745, 
Prince and Murphy's men parted ways to surround the camp. Captain Pahota and Captain Hoson and their guerrilla forces each headed to their ambush sites. The rangers and their prince made their way to the main gate and stopped about 700 yards from the camp to wait for nightfall and for the aircraft distraction. Meanwhile, a P-61 Black Widow from the 547th Night Fighter Squadron had taken off at 1800 hours. As the plane buzzed the camp, Lieutenant Carlos Tombo and his guerrillas along with a small number of rangers cut the camp's telephone lines to prevent communication with the large force stationed in Cabanatuan. At 19.45 hours, Murphy fired the first shot, indicating that the 2nd platoon of Company F was in position at the rear of the camp to signal the attack. The rangers hit the Japanese soldiers with overwhelming ferocity, using every weapon they had. They first took out the guard towers, pillboxes, and all the Japanese in the open. When those positions had been neutralized, the rangers stormed into the compound and completed the elimination of enemy soldiers and the interior defensive positions. Simultaneously, the teams at the blocking positions carried out their assignments. Pahota's men opened fire on the Japanese battalion in the bivouac next to the Cabo Creek. Guerrilla machine gunners stopped the Japanese counterattacks at the Cabo Creek Bridge, while the Ranger Bazooka teams was able to knock out two tanks and a truck. The other roadblock under Captain Hoson was not attacked, thanks to a P-61 night fighter who attacked a Japanese convoy headed towards Hoson's position. In less than 15 minutes, resistance inside the POW compound had been eliminated, though a final trio of mortar rounds was able to wound six men and mortally wounded the battalion surgeon, Captain James C. Fisher, one of only two rangers to die in the attack. At 2015 hour, the camp was secured from the Japanese and Prince was able to fire his flare to signal the end of the assault. 30 minutes after Murphy's opening shot, Prince had completed two searches of the camp and he had determined that all the prisoners had been found and removed. Additional Carabao carts arrived to transport former prisoners too weak to walk. The guerrillas then continued to provide all-around security to the maneuvering forces. About 12 hours after the assault on the camp, radio contact was made with the 6th Army. Trucks were requested to meet the force. A couple of hours later, the rangers and the prisoners was able to return to American lines. This mission was completed. It was the most complex operation that the rangers conducted during the Second World War and is one of the most successful to this day. All but one of the 511 American and Allied POWs were rescued while an estimated 523 Japanese were either killed or wounded. The cost of the rescue was two rangers and seven injured.